Hey everyone, welcome to our AMA today with the Replay team. Um, I'm Wes from Theta Labs and uh, happy to pass up to our, our host Jesse, who's going to be moderating today, uh, and also welcome Chris from Replay team. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Wes. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. It's been, awesome. it's been a long time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it's been since Austin oh. we were able to catch in per up in person. Hope to see you again soon. Definitely yeah. at Con, if not sooner. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey guys, great to be here. Appreciate you for letting us co-host this, Wes. Very, very excited to jump into everything that Replay's got going on, you know, and some of the, the amazing things that are coming up in the calendar for those guys. Cool. So yeah, I mean, I think possibly we can just jump straight in. I mean, Chris, you know, it's been great getting to know you a little bit better over the past uh, couple of weeks and, and working closely with the, the Replay team. I think it would be good just for our audience, if there's anyone that isn't already aware of Replay, just to give maybe a bit of background on yourself and, and the Replay project as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, hey, hey all, um, I'm Chris Arbapalli, I'm one of the founders of Replay. Uh, ImagineReplay.org. Um, so I started it with my business partner Dan um, uh, about two years ago now. Uh, I mean, a little less than that. Um, so my background's been in uh, entrepreneurship for the most part. Really dove into starting companies, creating and implement implementing visions. Uh, you know, ideas, create, you know, taking ideas and making it into something. Um, always had a knack for that. Um, my first two companies prior to Replay, uh, or projects prior to Replay, rather, uh, the first one was uh, in the mobile advertising technology world. It was a company called Mojiva. Um, uh, you know, that, that was in the digital media space. This was literally when the iPhone just came out back in 2007. 2008, um, you know, ran that company, grew it significantly, got it to an exit. It was actually a pretty good um, ride. Definitely learned a lot, had a lot of experience running it. Uh, you can imagine that was like basically through college, uh, right after college <laughs> that I did that. Um, so it was definitely a lot of firsthand experiences running that. And, right, and, and after that um, project, I went and started uh, Unreal Entertainment, which really got me into the deep parts of video and media and movie industry and so on. Um, and we, so with Unreal, we built a, a stack which effectively allowed anyone with content, any content owner, you know, whether you're a production company or a studio, a movie studio, uh, or even an independent creator on YouTube, um, we basically had a stack that simply, law, uh, you know, simplified the creation of the um, ro their their TV applications, like on Roku Fire TV, for example, uh, and so on. Um, think of it at like as like WordPress, but for video, and that that was kind of the previous project. Um, I'll get into why we started Replay soon, but um, but that was my background: a lot of media and a lot of ad tech. Um, and a lot of the learnings and experiences from those two projects really got me started uh, started in thinking about replay. So that's amazing. So yeah, it's definitely fair to say that you know you have the expertise and the experience in in the industry that replay is being built in. Um, but so yeah, we'd love to hear a little bit more about the vision behind replay and kind of what got got you guys together to to kind of found the company and what that journey looked like and, and kind of yeah what your your strategies yeah. and goals are with the business. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, really, the biggest thing what got what got us started with replay was around the lack of transparency, you know, around video distribution or content distribution, rather, in kind of the traditional media space. Um, so, for example, you know, we worked with studios, uh, production companies in the past and, you know, operated their OTT services. Um, a lot of the content owners that were syndicating or bringing their content into the, into those OTT platforms 
had very vi little visibility into what's really going on with their with their with their performance or with their you know with their activity of what what their what their content is actually doing on the network. It was mostly hidden, maybe even by design on purpose. Um, you know, for you know, for example, if you were an independent movie distributor, you know, and had a had a movie on like Two B TV or um, you know one of those other like Pluto TV, for example, or some other, or even Netflix, you just typically get like a an Excel sheet report on a quarterly basis saying that, all right, this is how much your movie actually was, you know, this is how many viewers you had and how much, you know, uh, activity actually received and this is how much, rev more importantly, this is how much revenue it actually generated uh, or the earnings. And that was very, you know, very archaic and there was no really any, um, you know, but it, 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 you can't even tell that it's a real report. You can't really ask them, you know, like, where, you know, is there any, like, actual proof behind this? It was just an Excel sheet. So, so all of that, like, really felt, and, and to be honest, it still is very nascent and very archaic. And, and, and I think it's totally, you know, unfair to, you know, to the, to the guys who actually created, you know, uh, created the content. And more importantly, there was no ability for a content owner on those platforms to really reach out to who's act to the user, to the community themselves, like who is and actually creating a relationship with the people that are engaging with their content. There was no like direct access to the community, right? So they can learn from them, get feedback, you know, really, you know, understand what they like about, let's say the documentary that they just created or, you know, like, uh, so, so they can get some feedback and maybe even create better documentary. There was no like connection between the two, right? It was very, uh, you know, I guess you could say very centralized and very controlled and very, um, yeah. And, and so, so that's, so we saw that and, you know, in our previous time, it was unreal. We powered almost a hundred different, you know, uh, streaming services, right. For other, for other, like I said, like other studios and stuff. And we saw this as a very, it was like the same issue over and over again. Uh, and this was the biggest complaint. Uh, and so that's really what led to, I mean, it was like a no-brainer no when, especially when, you know, around that time I started getting introduced to the blockchain and Web3 and what it means and um, the transparency that it can create, uh, especially when, you know, when all of this, all of the, you know, all of the actual delivery, all the distribution of the content can be, one, you know, distributed in a decentralized manner, um, you know, and obviously we, we, use, we utilize the theta infrastructure heavily for that. Um, and two, and this is where the replay technology kicks in, is actually creating uh, and tracking, you know, up to the second or up to the minute, um, what, you know, what exactly, you know, how much video, how much, uh, content is actually being viewed. So the transparency and the tracking and the on-chain, you know, recording of the activity of the, of the distribution of the, of the movie or the TV show, or the documentary or whatever it is, um, is what led to the birth of free play technology and the various use cases that are derived and can be empowered from just doing that. Um, and also creating a, a, a community focused approach on, um, okay, like, you know, if I'm, if I'm the documentary owner and I want to syndicate it, you know, I want to be able to reach out to the community and talk to them. And, and we, we try to achieve that by like hosting watch parties and minting collectibles and, you know, creating fan based things. And there's so many other gamifications elements that we've thought about and how it incorporates the Web3 technology inside that directly to achieve or solve some of those aspects of it. Um, so yeah, so that's really the birth of Replay and what motivated us to, you know, to, to actually start it. And we really thought about revolutionizing it, you know, revolutionizing video streaming, the engagement Um. Yeah.
Can you guys hear me? Just want to make sure. Yeah, I've got yeah, you know, dropped button. out just a tiny bit just at the end there. Internet is a little. Can you hear us, Chris? We heard pretty much all of that. It's just the the last couple of seconds that dropped out. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I might, I've been getting some light. I think Chris may be having some technical issues uh, disconnecting there. We'll just give him a moment to see if that changes. If not, Chris, maybe you may need to drop off of the stage and come back on. Sometimes that'll fix it. All right, cool. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's it, Jesse. Can you, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, no, you touched on some amazing points there. And I mean, I think, yeah, it's, it's very apparent that like the, you know, the media industry as it stands today is, is heavily monopolized, right? There's, there's not that much visibility or, or transparency in the ability for smaller creators to be able to see the impact of their content and their media and to have, you know, fair and equal uh, equity and, and value from the the content that they're creating so i can definitely see why there's a need for something like replay to exist um and yeah that kind of answered my question but the the next follow-up question i had for you was what was it that drove you to web3 right because there are systems in place that are off-chain that can kind of you know help with some of these things but obviously there are aspects and elements to, to web3 or blockchain that kind of allow you to do certain things in certain ways i mean you discussed around you know community participation and one thing that uh, i don't think we've touched on just yet is also incentivization right so not only being able to give that audience uh, a way to interact and, and communicate with content creators but also incentivizing that process as well so we'd love to hear your thoughts on you know how that model uh, is being changed by replay and and how you feel that that's something that's disruptive <laughs> Hey, I apologize, Jesse. Do you mind repeating that question? I had to jump off and come back. I had some connectivity issues. Yeah, for sure. No worries. So, yeah, just looking at, like, you know, some of the benefits and, and value adds of Web3. I mean, you touched on it a little bit, but just wanted to know, you know, in terms of replay and how it aligns with kind of the ethos of blockchain and Web3, right, which is authentication, decentralization, sometimes co-ownership, uh, this ability for, you know, collective community to, to really rally behind uh, content creators and just just creators in general you know these are things that are, are fantastic and, and kind of what makes web3 web3 and just wanted to know kind of your thoughts on this the future of of how this ecosystem would evolve and and kind of touching on like the the part that we haven't really discussed yet which is you know incentivization and how that plays into this model that you're building as well Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to be honest, it's all of that, right? I mean, that's the that's the that's the beauty of it, and why we thought replay was kind of the perfect use case and the perfect project, and how the rather blockchain is the right use case for replay. But you know, kind of vision and mission, and why we even wanted to start it. Um, you know, so many different aspects of it. Um, you know, one, you know, having a, having the Having the community and the users actually be involved um, in engaging, you know, obviously all of the aspects of how media is consumed, you know, uh, from engaging with it to actually participating and providing feedback to just kind of even just sitting back and watching, whatever it is, um, to even powering the protocol itself. I mean, there's so many, you know, to, to, to kind of become, uh, to, you know, whether it be through our partners, like with Theta, becoming a node operator and helping with the delivery of the content, every aspect of replay, um, you know, is, 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 you know, is, is kind of empowered by the user, by the people and the, and the community itself. So um, now more than ever, what, it, what we are seeing, obviously, in terms of evolution of what's happening, you know, I mean, if I mean, obviously, we cannot ignore the fact that you know AI is here. You know, I mean, and there's that's like a whole another topic. It cannot ignore the fact that AI is just outright scraping 
content, right? Um, and and it's and obviously it's training. It's like the it's AI is only as good as the data that it's being trained on. And where is the data coming from? And where is the content coming from? Um, so now more than ever, ever transparency, um, you know, permissioned access, syndication of content. So like the you know all the movie like. You know, you look at like how you know obviously now like Gen AI video and text to video and all these you know really amazing technologies are being birthed. Um, how, you know, where is that training coming from? And you know, what about the creators of that content, the original creators of the content? How are they compensated? How are they even you know understanding and having control over what their day, what their content is actually doing to the entire you know to, to the actual ecosystem of the of the net new AI capabilities that are being launched now on a, almost on a daily basis so it just becomes more and more apparent and how web3 and blockchain can actually help with that like you know and especially our protocol itself like where it actually can can track the viewership, the ownership, whether it be through, you know, through, through a collectible or, you know, through a, you know, however mechanic, uh, you know, however kind of mechanics that we can enable um, becomes very important. And that's, and that's the evolution that we're also kind of foreseeing and we're jumping on it, like, because it's just something that's so necessary is, you know, just content, distribution, transparency, and how it actually affects, like, enablement of training data. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, so basically you have, we have content creation, content distribution, content monetization, and now this entirely new paradigm of training data. And effectively, blockchain enables distribution of all of those tasks and appropriately reward participants across, across the board. Um, and so it's, it's actually, pretty, I mean, this is amazing, like how the two are intersecting and it's like very much needed now. Um, and especially, you know, now with, it's like an entire like loop in a circle, right? So it's like, there's text to video AI that's being trained on real content that content owners, creators have produced. And then there is, net new content that's being created uh, on the other side of it. And then it's like, well, who's the owner of that? Um, and, you know, where is that being distributed and controlled and who's permissioning that and who's, the, who's actually getting compensated for that? And, you know, there's so many aspects of it that are totally unknown right now. But, but we feel like, you know, Replay has the opportunity to be the center of that um, especially, you know, as we can enhance the protocol to accommodate those net new use cases, uh, you know, it, it just, yeah, we're, we're totally excited about what the future holds for Replay. Um, 100%. Yeah. yeah, and I think you touched on two really important topics there that I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into. And the first being, you know, this this process of training data in, in these, uh, you know, image creation, video creation mm -hmm. models, and the fact that, you know, it is absolutely fascinating technology and the speed at which it's advancing is is astounding. But yeah, there's this kind of elephant in the room or, or unspoken thing, and it is starting to be discussed a little bit more now around, you know, the rights of the people that created the content that this stuff is is being trained on, right? And and the marginalization of that group. And I think, you know, that's a, that's a real problem because if there isn't an incentive in place for content creators to continue continue to create content because you know they have this um i guess existential doubt that that content is going to get used by an ai and they're going to get slowly pushed out of that infrastructure and that process oh, yeah. there's there's a real issue there so yeah i think like you know ai is existing in a space at the moment where there's not exactly much regulation around it and you know regulation right. can in ways stifle innovation but in some ways it can also protect the participants right and it's this this Dang, well, careful, delicate balance that you need to get to make sure that you can still have that growth and that innovation whilst uh, protecting that core group of people, you know, that are, that are at the center of it. So, yeah, I'd be really interested to, to kind of hear some more thoughts on that from yourself and like how Repay plays into that to, to kind of protect content creators and not like use AI to replace them as such, but just enable them and enhance that creative process. That's right. Yeah. And, 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 and to be honest, I mean, that's the... 
that's one of the main focus and you know attention like uh, like our team and the community is also kind of working through is you know permissioned access to content for providing training data to net new gen AI applications right so what you know and I mentioned that right you know right before is you know AI is as, only as good as the training data that it actually you know uh, that it actually gets, right? Uh, the difference between a Sora model, right, is, and th then like some other, you know, open model is, is that I, I believe, you know, obviously Sora themselves are not too transparent on where they're, sorry, OpenAI is not fully transparent on like who they used or where they used their training data, right? Like, you know, did they go and license content from, movie studios uh did they go and just scrape content from some like the ugc on youtube or something like that like where did they where did they get that right and when, you, and, when you, and when you ask them about it they get very cagey oh yeah very the, cagey. the interview where it looked yes very uh guilty conscience you know when that, when they were asked where they're exactly <laughs> sourcing their content i know it's great it's amazing um which I was pretty surprised. I don't know if you all see, saw that interview, but I thought that was pretty, <laughs> pretty funny. But anyway, but you know what? I, I don't blame them because it's like, and obviously it's, um, it, it's all, you know, new and, you know, and the speed of innovation that this is all happening. I mean, it's kind of, you get just, you, you'd rather, you, you just get, you just need to get that content. But anyways, regardless, what, what, what I'm trying to say is that that actually paves the way for, uh, what we what we want to do and what needs to happen, right? There's an even greater incentive now and a whole new def definition to what a creator will be and will need to be, right? Uh, 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 and, and we want to empower those creators. We want to be able to provide a platform where, you know, whether, you know, you have, you're, you've created some original content or, uh, or even studios, um, uh, you know, uh, documentary clips and trailers, et cetera, all of this content, we want to be able to provide an, uh, provide a transparent, like create like a transparent framework to, um, to monetize that, to monetize that uh, data for AI companies, like for AI, net new AI companies, right? So we want to be able to allow a platform where, uh, you know, anyone that needs data, all right, anyone that needs videos or content can come to our platform, pay for it, whether it is on a per, you know, per video or per query or whatever it is basis, um, and, and, and be able to use that to, you know, to make their models, uh, you know, better. Uh, and we see that, uh, we see that uh, happening already. And today, um, Replay has... And, and currently works with over a hundred different content partners. Um, and this includes like obviously our fast channel, like the live channel partners that we have, the movie and you know, TV show documentaries that we series that we have. All of those partners we're in touch with are asking the same question. It's like, what is happening to these text to video and video and what is the next Hollywood look like? and where is their content being used for training? So we're, we're actively working with all of those guys to provide this kind of capability um, and provide this, you know, effectively what we're calling it like a permission-based, you know, content distribution syndication model um, that's entirely powered by the replay tracking protocol and the blockchain itself. Um, and we're pretty, you know, I, th I think that's going to definitely shift the, you know, shift the ecosystem, incentivize the, the right people. Um, and, and, you know, I haven't even talked about kind of the other side yet, but that's at least on one side of it, from the creation side of it, you know, we want to be able to have that that ability. And, and someone needs to do that. I mean, some, I mean, really, like someone needs to do that ASAP, right? I mean, it's uh, before it gets out of hand. Um, I'm sure, you, you know, I mean, there's so many, like, I'm sure you guys heard uh, there's so many like lawsuits that are happening with all these like with Google and OpenAI like it's like hey you're stealing my content you're taking my stuff like what's going on um, and and it's not just those big players like it's like other people too right they're all like okay where's 
you know, like, who is the owner of this? Like, how am I being compensated for what I am actually contributing to this net new thing? And you know, all of that stuff needs to be resolved in some way or the other. Um, but yeah, no, I totally agree. Like this, this industry that you guys are approaching is is going to be a multi multi billion dollar industry. And you know, if mm-hmm. platforms oh, like yeah. yours doesn't exist, you know the the actual content creators at the core of this are, are really going to get pushed out. So I can definitely see the value of it. And I mean, you know, I just wanted to touch on something with Wes as well. I mean, we know that like AI, deep in these are all narratives that are approaching in, in crypto right now that are hot topics. Majority of the projects, you know, don't even genuinely have any sort of like decentralized public infrastructure network or you know are just using the word ai and kind of slapping it onto their brand obviously you guys are, are genuinely leveraging this but i would just love to hear from from where's that data you know from you know a, a blockchain that was doing deep in before deep in was even a word and and how like the infrastructure that you guys are creating and, and some of the things that you've got coming up in your roadmap are, are there to kind of support and enhance uh, what projects like replay and, and chris are trying to do yeah, we, we always get a chuckle out of the one with the deep end being a new narrative because, you know, uh, Beta and, and a handful of other projects as well. We've basically been building deep end since 2017. Uh, it just wasn't a name now. And, you know, from time to time, crypto has to reinvent new new brands for, for sectors, even for the crypto as a whole. You know, Web3 kind of came about during a bear market when crypto was a dirty word. So... It just comes to the territory, but yeah, it, it, at the heart of it, it, it's just the same as we've uh, always been building by building a network of nodes that performs productive work over a decentralized network. Um, and it kind of it, it kind of makes sense that that comes about because we knew pretty early that what we were building, even though originally it was purpose built for our video platform, we kind of realized early on and why we expanded the box and started talking to other video platforms and then even use cases beyond video because we're just building a useful decentralized network. And for us, it was maybe useful for video streaming, but to plenty of other projects or enterprises, it's going to be useful for other things. Once you've got tens of thousands of nodes with compute power and, and uh, lots of extra bandwidth, they can do all kinds of things. And that's kind of at the heart, I, I guess, of what, what deep end projects are trying to achieve, just build out this infrastructure network and then who knows what emergent use cases are going to find uh, find use for it. Um, that sort of dovetails into uh, why we're seeing more AI projects start to emerge in you say it because um, it, it really is just another use for the, the, the deep end network that you've, you've already built. Uh, we put out a, a blog recently talking about how it's kind of all come full circle because the first thing that they were working on many, many years ago, it was 20, early 2017, um, was doing uh, uh, rendering of 3D models for uh, live esports tournaments, and so they were, you know, the team was chaining up racks of, of NVIDIA GPUs to do this, uh, to do this real time rendering, so that users could be in the stadium or anywhere online and watching, basically from a in game perspective, which had to be rendered on the fly so that it matched up with the real game, and. Really now it's just what we've done is, you know, marry the two and uh, create a network that can do that kind of work. But instead of doing it on prem, you've got a decentralized network around the world that can do this. So it, it's kind of funny how it started with NVIDIA GPUs. And now here we are, you know, coming up on a decade later. And it's actually super high demand for NVIDIA GPUs just doing other things like uh, training AI models. But you know, it evolves and now I'll do it over a decentralized network and for different use cases that we didn't imagine in 2017. But, you know, you build a useful network and who knows what people might decide they want to do with it. And so it's really exciting because, you know, we, we see a lot of it's coming down the pipeline right now, of course. AI use cases are interesting because um, the sheer amount of compute they need means a lot of work for the network. But um, it's exciting because we don't know what's going to come next. And, you know, as long as we, we feel like as long as we build strong infrastructure and, and put it out to the world and show what this decentralized network is capable of, um, you know, we, we will find out to some extent what are the new, new startups, new projects, new use cases that people are going to come up with that might want to use it. 
No, absolutely. And I love that you take that perspective on it. You know, we, we often get into the mindset of like building for a specific problem or issue that needs to be solved today and very often forget about the fact that just by building this infrastructure, the technology that comes behind it, you know, we're going to see an emergence of completely new things, right, that we couldn't have ever imagined. And I think that's like kind of the joy of, of what you guys are, are doing and, you know, how projects like Replay come into fruition is because as an, as the infrastructure layer, you know, you guys provide the ability for uh, this uh, ecosystem to exist in a decentralized way and then yeah you know guys like Chris who obviously very well understands the, the industry that he's coming from understand how to leverage that in a way that not only makes sense for content creators which we kind of focused on quite a lot but also the the end users right the audience the participants in this so I wanted to try and touch on that as well a little bit because I think you know we've covered all of the the kind of benefits that are there for the content creators in terms of being able to provide them uh, permissioned access to the content they're creating kind of make sure that their value in this ecosystem is is seen and and they're able to to benefit from that but i guess in terms of like your audience chris i mean where do you see the value generation for those guys specifically and how does this kind of redefine the model that we see you know netflix obviously and uh, amazon for example have the monopoly right now but what is that that change that nexus that's going to you know make that uh, replay uh, a much more appealing uh, product to use over those types of uh, services that we see today. Yeah, yeah, actually, it's it's it's, uh, it's actually pretty exciting because uh, there is going to be a significant disruption in those traditional, you know, sense, right? The, the Netflixes of the world um, with the you know with the advent of you know this Gen AI and you know obviously like you know. I spent a bit of time talking about the left side of the piece, right? The creation of it, or rather the, not, not the creation, but rather the, um, the content creators and the training data. If this is going to, you know, well, you know, obviously enable the creation of net new, uh, content and how that net new content, right? Like, so for example, now I'm sure we've all seen with the SOAR model, the 30 second or the 60 second clips or trailers like that it was able to create based on a story or a plot or something like that. Right. So, I mean, it's going to, it's going to create an entirely new, in my opinion, entirely different experience of how video is consumed, you know, how, how, how generally video is consumed and more importantly, who the creators are. Like you don't need to be, um, you know, like a like a in the traditional sense, you don't need to have all the investment of like having a, a studio and having a, a you know a director, a producer of this and that, a story writer, a plot. Like you can literally like you know at this point you know create content um, uh, you know dynamically uh, pretty pretty seamlessly with with tools like that, right? With models like that. So when that happens, like when, when the investment of creation, of creating net new content becomes basically much smaller, um, and all it comes down to is just prompt engineering, right? Like you're just kind of, you know, you're just creating, you know, you just like you have to come up with, uh, <coughs> you know, having the ability uh, to, excuse me, <coughs> um, it, it, like so, for basically, you know, if it all comes down to creating a script, a plot, using a persona, like, hey, I want to write a story that's like, you know, Steven Spielberg or whatever, um, and I want to create a sixty-second trailer or a story or even a short film. I mean, it democratizes creation even further, right? Um, and we want we envision doing all of that directly on the replay ecosystem, directly within the replay platform. We want to be able to allow the creation of that content or that type of content um, directly within replay and, and and effectively enable what we talked about before: permission access and monetization of that content, and even empower a whole new generation of. A, 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 an entirely no, novel experience of like it might not look like Netflix anymore. It might look like something else in the future, right? and we all know that, 
Um, and it, it basically creates a wider pool of creators on one side, and every consumer can effectively become a creator. You know, you know, it's like you know, we envision like you know, obviously today, if you look at YouTube, I mean, you, you have some, yeah, you know, every YouTuber has so many viewers for every channel. I mean, this will change the ratio, right? Um, of because now a creator can, like a consumer, can be a creator, right? I know, for I know, plenty, like you know, for me personally, right? I mean, I'm I'm a huge, obviously, I mean, you can imagine, I'm a huge movie fan and buff and you know i love watching stuff and you know it's like that's little if someone asks me what do you do in your free time I'm like i don't know i'm just always on yeah i'm always watching some documentary or some tv series or something you know and and i personally like you know appreciate the level of investment that goes in and the level of storytelling that goes in the creation of some of these series and it's amazing it's awesome um but all of that is going to change now Right, all of that is going to change because now anyone, like including myself, I mean, I'm not bragging, but I think I can, you know, could now with that, you know, with the with like with the kind of idea of like, okay, like I know a story, I have an idea, help me figure out a nice, you know, plot and a vision for the next, you know, 15 minute short clip or short film. Um, and I want to be able to share my story and vision. So we want to be able to do that. We want to be able to enable the next generation of creators. Uh, I think that's the vision of Replay. We want to be able to enable that, obviously, by utilizing tools and models like, you know, like Sora. And actually, we're pretty excited about being a huge um, adopter of the Data Edge Cloud uh, especially with the new AI infrastructure, the decentralized infrastructure and the models, like, for example, Stability AI and a few other models that we're actually pretty excited about fine-tuning and using. In fact, we're already experimenting and doing a lot of things internally. Um, we'd love to show you some of that very soon. I mean, it could be as early as next week, uh, at least some preview of what we're working on and at least the ideas that we, we have um, around the creation of the content, um, but yeah, and that's and that's kind of the that's that's kind of where we're seeing what you know how replay would actually incorporate um, incorporate some of these uh, these tools and, and technologies that are coming. In. We envision that directly within the replay platform. No, that's brilliant. And yeah, I'm going to go over to Wes in a second about the, the Edge Cloud and how that's going to be a, a strong part of how you managed to bring this to life. But um, yeah, I just wanted to touch on, on a couple of things that you mentioned, right, about this, I guess, binary thought process that we have around content creator, content consumer, content streaming platform, content creation studio right and and trying to work out like what is replay is it a streaming platform is it a, a platform for creating content am i a content consumer am i a creator and i think you know what you're saying about maybe netflix doesn't look like netflix in a few years is this fact that the evolution is looking like those lines are getting blurred to a point where you know they're going to become unified you know you're going to be both the consumer and the creator of content at the same time um, and i would love to to go all you know, way out and, and really start to look at our imaginations as to where that would lead. I think, you know, I don't know if you've seen Black Mirror at all, where this person has um, their life as like the episode every single day. So they're looking at what happened the day before or the day after, can't quite remember, right? But it's like this idea, this premise of content getting created directly for each individual. So everybody's streaming service is tailored directly to them. I think there's some wild ways that this could evolve. But yeah, in terms of, you know, the the birth of this, right, which you guys are kind of spearheading. I mean, how does the Theta Edge Cloud tie into this and how does that enable you guys to, to really build on that if Wes, you wanted to take that? Yeah, I, I can go first and I think Wes can uh, sure. tap on that. Um, so what is Replay and why and what we see, the few, like what, what we're excited about being what it obviously, you know, at its birth and its core is decentralized tracking, distribution, and attribution, right? We think of ourselves as a payments framework in the sense like we want to be able to compensate the creators, compensate the consumers, whoever, whoever it is that is engaging with the content and creating the content, right? But ultimately, that's the core platform and the protocol. Um, replay, we want to enable now 
even the creation of the content too. We've never did that in the past only because it was impossible. It was like a lot of, you know, like I said before, it's a lot of investment to even create the content. Like I'm talking about real content, like high quality production level content. And I think we want to go a step further now thanks to the, you know, advances in, you know, AI models and things like that. We want to be able to offer the ability to create net new content using AI and then bolt on the core fundamentals of decentralized tracking and distribution and attribution at the end of the day. Um, we want to be able to push, like, how, you know, obviously create a platform which allows creators to come in or now the next, like creators are consumers now, right, at the end of the day, all in one place and then be able to syndicate and push to other streaming services, streaming platforms, or even some net new AI video experiences that might be empowered that way. Um, and how we're using the Theta Edge Cloud infrastructure is effectively the creation of the content. We're, we're actually like in the process, like we're working with JE and the team to, uh, and the Theta folks uh, to kind of host our own video models, like, to, like effectively script to video, story to video type models. Um, and we're hosting it directly on the that data distribution, like data edge, you know, the decentralized infrastructure uh, and, and making that creation of the content much simpler uh, uh, and directly within the, within the, within, you know, within the nuances of the replay protocol and, and the replay subchain. Yeah, it's quite interesting because um, you know we're, we're very excited about what Edge Cloud can enable because it's it's sort of the marriage of the decentralized network we created and being able to tap into data centers around the world with their sheer horsepower of of rendering capability and it, it's actually become quite important when it comes to like the Gen AI use cases that Chris is talking about because you can bifurcate those into a lot of work that can be done by just say one GPU at a time and needs to be done iteratively. So it can be done over and over by uh, a consumer grade user or by many of them. Um, but then there's some thing, tasks that just simply aren't efficiently done by one device. And so those are the ones where it makes more sense to be able to route to uh, an enterprise grade rack uh, at, at a data center. And a lot of what Edge Cloud is, is sort of the routing software of that. How do you take a complex task, um, like say generative AI, and have it do the first sort of, uh, the digital equivalent of, of whiteboarding or creating the, the sketchbook, uh, which can be done very quickly because it's low resolution rendering. And then once you have something like a final product, shoot that over to a data center to do the super intensive work needed to get to, to the end product. Um, and you know, a lot of this, we, when we were envisioning this, we knew that it was going to be in demand, but as a, uh, something more of an enterprise product, like who's actually going to be using this. But these things are changing so fast with who has access to these models that, um, like what Chris is talking about, having the content creation, having even that be pushed to the user, now it's almost, we, we got to rethink a little bit about how edge cloud is used because in some, to some extent it could be a consumer in facing um, product as well to be used. You know, it, in the past, it would only be a, a major studio or, you know, or an indie studio, but, you know, not an individual really using this, but if it becomes so easy and, and then the, the sort of the narrative of content creation itself gets decentralized out to end users that are creating the video content that people watch, then we have to think about how the interface of Edge Cloud reflects that because it may just be your end user who now wants to use uh, a complex AI model to create video. Um, it, it's, a, it's a new challenge, obviously, but it's also, it, it's a pretty uh, nice one to have, I think, because it expands who may be using this, this technology, both the models, but also Edge Cloud to almost anyone. So it's, um, you know, I think just strikes again to what I was talking about earlier, but it's not what we would have originally envisioned we're making this, but if you build something useful, who knows how or who may be using it 
in the future. So you know, we, we are really appreciative of, of products like uh, Replay and our ecosystem because they're really the drivers of, of pulling in what could be millions of new users that use these tools. Uh, that maybe wouldn't have come, maybe aren't the most technically savvy, so they wouldn't have come directly and yeah, you know exactly. f- followed our documentation and talked to JE about how to build it. No, but through sort of um, you know think of almost like replay as like middleware, like it's it's the the missing link between how any consumer around the world can any end user around the world could could use this tech. Yeah, absolutely, and that's how. Yeah, exactly, and I mean. Uh, we have seven to 10,000 daily active users now that are effectively engaging the content on replay. We see all of them being able to generate and create net new content, right? Net new videos. Uh, hey, um, you got Josh on replay side here. Right, yeah. uh, do we want to start wrapping things up or do we have oh, time yeah. for any other questions or? Sure. Yeah, so I think we'll probably look to wrap it up in the next 10 or so. So yeah, we'll, we'll close it out on the hour. Just wanted to say that everyone that has had their hands up, we will be opening up the floor for questions pretty soon. Um, and then looking at a few of the questions in those comments. I uh, just wanted to ask, right? So there's something that we've touched on, which is, uh, you know, that potentially IP is going to be the final moat, you know, in terms of the ability to create content, the the complexities behind that, the budgets behind that are getting minimized consistently through AI, right? So we see an ecosystem right now in Web3 where there is, you know, innovative IP coming out. I mean, you can look at Yugo, which I know you guys have spoken to. You can look at uh, Pudgy Penguins, right, which is probably the most famous global uh concept of like an nft collection becoming a recognized household ip in terms of kids toys etc how do you see replay being able to kind of provide a way for these ip for this ip story in web3 to kind of you know produce content and maybe you know leverage what you guys are building to add additional value to to this ecosystem that's kind of being created in nfts right now yeah, absolutely. I think that is a very important point, especially it's going to be an important point. I think we discussed that before um, when it comes to IP. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we envision, you know, obviously at its core, uh, you know, respecting their NFTs. Have we lost the fish, maybe? All right. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, um, I can hear you fine. Yeah. You can hear me? Okay. Cool. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's about, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's putting, you know, it, it could tie, like, a content. Uh, I'm happy to speak to it. Can you, Jesse, maybe just repeat the question, and I'm happy to speak to it while you. Uh, I think maybe you it's can't hear on the line. Yeah, Chris is, Chris is uh, talking right now. Can you hear him? Oh, really? Okay, yeah. sorry. I'm t- that's that's worst story. It's like, only Josh is not able to hear me. That's so funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, just to keep it simple, uh, to, be, to keep it quick, uh, yeah, so, the, so we basically are, you know, obviously at its core, you know, we're, we are looking at it as, you know, with attribution and tracking and, and at its core, so we have, that is literally the one thing that we're focused on, and the creators that are creating content, whether it be their own content that they've already created or some net new content that soon to be launched, Gen AI video creation, um, you know, we're going to respect, like, we're going to base, they're going to be able be able to mint NFTs against their content uh, as a proof of ownership. Uh, and then they're going to be able to do a lot of engaging things with that content as well. Uh, especially as they're being monetized by net new LLMs. Like, LLMs can come to replay uh, to license videos for their training, or, or it could be any other net new AI applications. And, you know, they need to really, I mean, especially with the usage of the, of, of blockchain and the ownership of the content itself, we envision that, you know, it's, it has to be effectively it can be respected within the mechanics of Web3. It's fascinating stuff. Yeah, I think there's there's a huge opportunity there in terms of yeah. decentralized IP plus decentralized right. permissions, uh, content creation, and merging those two worlds together. So I think that's super exciting. So I just wanted to ask one more question before we open up the floor to some of the people that have had their hands up for... Um, yep. Yeah, so I guess what's next for Replay, right? What are the exciting <laughs> things that are getting you guys up in the morning? You know, what are the um, roadmap activations that we've got coming up in the near future for you guys? 
Yeah, I, I think we, we we talked about a bit. Um, you know, the, we're we're launch we're, we're we're excited and I mean super pumped to work on like a, a replay AI agent that's going to be embedded into the into the platform directly. Um, and what the AI is going to be able to do is it's going to be able to obviously you know you can just talk to it, chat with it. You can it can ask, answer everything about replay and what it does and. Um, it can recommend content that, you know, you might be interested in watching. We're actually partnering with some really major um, uh, metadata companies on the media space uh, to get like, so for example, like TVDB uh, you know, is one and a few others in the space to be able to get the most accurate like movie data and, you know, what's trending on Netflix. And so you can kind of quickly ask, like, you know, what can I watch, like, you know, based on what your preferences are and things like that. And then more importantly, right within that agent, you can be able to create content, like by just writing a script. So it's like a script to video, uh, or you can create a video trailer, uh, based on some content that you can upload to it. Like you can, for example, you can say, here's my, here's my documentary, uh, and create me a trailer. You know, or you can say things like, and this is some of the things that we're, I mean, we're, you know, I, it's hard for me to keep, keep my mouth shut, but like, we're also doing some really amazing things with, with, the, with our Psycho KO series. Like, you know, we're, you know, we're working on like the ability for, you know, consumers to play around with some of the characters, um, that are in the Psycho KO, um, and, you know, and have it do stuff. You know, uh, have it like jump off a plane or go swimming or something like that. Uh, you know, you can be as creative as you want uh, with the AI model. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, anyways, yeah, so we'll definitely be sharing some of that uh, updates and roadmaps. So definitely look out for that uh, in our upcoming uh, things over the next few weeks. So. Amazing. Yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye out and uh, very, very excited to see how that evolves. I think uh, short form video content is is probably going to be uh, very, very unique and different thanks to you guys and, and what you're building. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the floor now. So, Barack, I know you've had your uh, hand up for a while. I'm going to add you as a speaker if there's anything you wanted to ask the replay team or, or where's it later. Hey, Brack, how's it going? Let me know if you can uh, hear us. Okay, let's move on to uh, S. Lamet. How's it going, buddy? Can you hear us? Okay, I think they're having some technical issues or connectivity issues. So I'm just going to go through some of the comments um, and see if there's anything that hasn't already been covered in some of the announcements. I mean, it looks like there's a, a couple of comments in terms of like being able to withdraw from the US, but Chris, I know you guys have covered this pretty extensively in the uh, Discord as well, but yeah, if there's any additional thought, um, things you want to say on that, I know you guys are, are working closely to keep an eye on, on regulations and, and making sure you know that this is something that is present in your guys' mm -hmm. mind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that is obviously top of mind. You know, obviously, you know, we're, we're definitely monitoring that. Uh, uh, the the regulations in the U.S. when it comes to withdrawals, um, yeah, we have a, a KYC uh, process. Um, you know, we can open that up as soon as you know things change. Um, and more importantly, you know, we're actively working on so much uh, on platform utility uh, for you know the R play token. And uh, yeah, and that, that's what we're focused on. I think I think yeah, as we talked about all the cool stuff that we're working on, I think it's I think it's going to be exciting for the you know everything is going to be driven by the R play token, whether you're creating content or you're distributing it or you're monetizing it uh, from studios. You know, it's all going to be tied around the token itself. So yeah. 
Hundred percent. Yeah, and that's the real value, right? It's it's refreshing to see a project come through with a utility token yeah. that is actually directly embedded in how you use the platform. So yeah, very very excited to to hear that and see that. So yeah, I mean, I think we can probably wrap things up now. I don't know, Josh, if there's anything that you wanted to add to this, or Chris, if you had any final thoughts or anything that you wanted to uh, to finish on. But yeah, I'll leave. Uh, I'll hand over the mic to you guys. Nothing other than sorry for interrupting. <laughs> I <laughs> totally did not hear you guys. <laughs> no problem. We'll blame Elon, man. He, uh, he needs to sort out his faces. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, they're right. Uh, just, uh, just last thing, like a minute. I mean, obviously, I, I see a pretty nice turnaround here. I really appreciate you guys all tuning in, uh, listening to about replay. Thank you, Wes, for, for helping coordinate this as well and joining this. Uh, we're excited to be uh, part of Theta. We really are. Uh, Theta is an amazing infrastructure for what we're doing, uh, and it only accelerates our vision uh, and things like that. So, yeah, we got some amazing, amazing uh, news coming out uh, that's related to our token. Please stay tuned for that. Um, and uh, yeah, and we're, we're just yeah, we're we're just all in and. And, and looking forward to all the all the community feedback and things like that. So that's all from my side. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, and echo everything Chris has said. You know, we're, we're talking pretty much daily now, and I'm very excited on some of the things that he's sharing with us and, and the whole replay team. So, yeah, I think this is going to be something that is monumentally uh, important. You know, I think you guys are spearheading a, a massive shift in the way that we consume content, the way that we create it. We've talked about some amazing things on this uh, spaces, and I look forward to, to doing many more with you guys and kind of opening up the imagination to, you know, what does this look like in 10 years 15 years you know we've seen the speed of, of how these technologies evolve and you know i'm an idealist bit of a futurist and i think there's there's so much more that's going to come from this initial uh you know phase that you guys are, are really building out so now thank you so much for your contributions um and yeah that's that's pretty much everything make sure guys to join uh, the replay team in the discord make sure to follow them on their twitter if you don't already wes thank you so much for for letting us host this space it's been fantastic and uh, yeah look forward to many many more yeah it's great talking to you guys thanks for joining uh, take care all right thank you bye, -bye. take care